I'm glad you checked in today because we're going to follow up on some user comments that suggested that I try applying high voltage to standard light bulbs and vintage light bulbs. Stay tuned to find out what happens. Let's get started. So, there were some great comments made by viewers on the first video I did on the x-rays generated by putting high voltage across a magnetron. Stingerbold 9327 suggested the use of gasless bulbs. Stefan de Moulin suggested using a microwave oven bulb. These are usually gasless. And then WBT suggested a whole load of bulbs, including the vintage light bulbs. So in this experiment, we're going to test the vintage light bulbs. These were the easiest ones to get. In the older light bulbs, uh, they didn't use argon in the bulb. Instead, they just evacuated all of, all of the air out of the bulb so that there would be a complete vacuum. And in a complete vacuum, there are no gas molecules to impede the transfer of electrons from the cathode, which would be the filament, to the anode, which would be the glass envelope of the bulb. And to obtain an electrical connection to the glass, we can use aluminum tape. So I have some aluminum tape here, and I would just stick that onto the glass and then connect that to the positive of a high voltage power supply. Now for our high voltage power supply, we're gonna use this um, Cockroft Walton multiplier here, which can put out about 40,000 volts and I'm decreasing the current by using a series of resistors here. And I have my leads here, I have my ground here. And then I have a little support which is made out of an insulating styrofoam material. And then my positive is here. And we're gonna begin with this neon bulb and work our way up to this vintage light bulb to see which one of these produces any detectable x-rays the experiment with the neon bulb and the regular light bulb may also function as a great control experiment to see if high voltage electronic interference is causing counts to show up on the Geiger counter. Here's our Geiger counter picking up background radiation. As you can see, the amount of radiation is very low. I've just turned it on. Okay. Our neon bulb is now connected, so I'm going to turn it on now and let's see if we're getting anything. Nope, not seeing anything at all. Notice how with the neon bulb, the color changed from orange to blue. I think it burned a tiny hole through the glass and introduced air into it. This bulb is actually fairly old, but I'm, I'm, st I'm still thinking it's got argon in it. A good way to see if a bulb has argon or other gases in it is to put it next to an activated Tesla coil. See, here I have a Tesla coil, and I'm putting this bulb near it. And as you can see, there's argon in this bulb. Now I have this vintage light bulb, which has a thin uh, strand-like filament in it. Let's see if this lights up. This one does not appear to have argon in it. So this one would be good for making or demonstrating x-ray production with. Regular incandescent bulb. Here you guys. No detectable, no detectable x-rays. That snap just then was the bulb cracking with a small hole forming in it. With the application of foil, the plasma arc causes localized heating and cracks the glass. Here's another one where the high voltage cracked the glass and let air in. See how the tungsten of the filament immediately oxidizes and forms a white smoke. 
I tested that neon bulb too and that didn't work. So it looked like that got a tiny hole in it. It seems like using foil to generate a positive electrode on the glass is not a good idea. Especially with high voltage DC, it immediately burns a hole through the glass and then destroys the vacuum in the bulb or gets rid of all the argon in the bulb. To avoid this problem with the foil, I'm trying something a little different here. I've got some wet paper on it instead of the metal, but I have connected the, the clip to the wet paper. Hopefully this will prevent burning holes through the glass. I've got the Geiger counter here. I'm going to switch it on and hopefully it, it'll work. Here goes. A lot of x-rays. Notice that faint blue glow? That's actually the glass fluorescing from the x-rays. You can kind of see it if you look at the edge of the glass. It's easier to see the fluorescence. Well, that was a crazy amount of x-rays. Even at a distance, it was going, making the meter go off the scale and I had to reset it. It was way over 100 uh, millirems per hour at this distance. And I don't know what it is about these bars, but the electrons are really decelerating into glass. I don't know if that's leaded glass, which is why it makes so many x-rays, but it was a lot. Okay, I'm repeating it at a distance, so I'm way back here from it. And I reset the meter. So let's see what we get. This is quite a distance. Very high, dangerous amounts of radiation. Okay, I decided to run it remotely to confirm what I was seeing earlier. It totally drives the Geiger counter crazy. Well, it turns out these vintage bulbs that have a hard vacuum in them are clear winners when it comes to x-ray production. And I don't think I'm gonna play with these anymore because of the intensity of the x-rays, even at quite a distance. Um, it's hard to believe that just the electron striking glass, as I'm sure it was, those were going in all directions. So uh, I'm done experimenting with this. It was just really to prove it and to answer some of the uh, comments that I saw. And uh, those are great comments, by the way. And please keep on making those because it gives me ideas for further experiments. I do hope you enjoyed this and um, please uh, don't forget to check back. Hope to see you later in another video.